Hello and welcome to The Daily Oz. I'm Harry. I'm Zara. Weekends are sacred in Australia. Whether it's kicking back to have a few beers with mates, exploring the great outdoors or putting your feet up, it's a right that workers fought for and was granted by the courts. 77 years on, we're starting to look at four-day work weeks. In today's Rewind and Deep Dive, we'll look at how the Aussie weekend came to life and how the nature of work is changing. Harry, I um, saw your piece on this over the weekend and thought that it was an excellent piece of trivia that people could go and take to their Tuesday trivia nights to say, hey, do you know how long the weekend's been around formally in Australia? Would you have gotten it right beforehand? Absolutely not. No. Would have failed that one. (laughs) But I think that this is so interesting because, you know, us here today, 2024, believe that the weekend is this kind of enshrined right that we have to turn off and, you know, especially with right to disconnect laws, especially Mm. to turn off. But it hasn't always been that way. When I first thought about the weekend coming into existence for the first time 77 years ago, I sort of thought, okay, that's a long time ago. Mm. It's been, you know, 77 years. But then you look back and think 1947 wasn't actually that mm. long ago. I mean, my grandparents were I was going to say, any around. of our older yeah. listeners will take great offence to us saying <laughs> that it was so long ago. <laughs> exactly. And the whole concept of a worker's right to some knockoff time just didn't really exist. And there wasn't even really a word for it until mm. maybe the 1930s, 1940s, when this idea of a weekend actually started to spread and yeah. uh, pick up around the world. And what was the typical day for an Australian worker prior to this weekend actually becoming a thing? I'm sure a lot of people who are listening are visual learners like me. So I wanted to put myself into the boots of a steel factory worker. He, and I can say he Mm -hmm. because it was a largely masculine industry at the time, would get up at the crack of dawn, maybe around 5am, and head out to the factory floor, slog away burning iron ore to make steel, and would clock off sometime in the evening. Some factories' days were even longer and squeezed even more out of their workers, and people would normally work six days a week, and the only sanctified day off was a Sunday, Mm -hmm. because in Australia at the time we had a predominantly Anglo-Christian population Population who was running the show and Sunday is the sacred day of rest. And so then how did this idea of the weekend come to be? It was many, many years in the making and looking back on it, Australia was actually comparatively late compared mm. to some other Western countries. So in the US, UK, New Zealand, they had all developed the idea of the 40-hour work week before they entered the Second World War. Once the war ended in 1945, Australian workers decided to barrack for this right to reduce their hours, but this had been a fight that had been going on for decades, and many union groups and organisers brought legal action against some industries, including car manufacturers, metal workers, tailors, stonemasons, boilermakers, that's not a word I've heard (laughs) in the recent past, but at the time was a very big industry. The unions had pushed for a reduction in working hours and on the 8th of September in 1947, the Commonwealth Court of Arbitration made a pretty important ruling that gave life to the idea of the 40-hour working week. And in handing down its unanimous decision, the court actually said, and I quote, the future will be watched with concern and interest. Mm. So I can't go back and ask the judges what they were thinking when they made this decision, but that kind of language just gives you a sense of how they knew there was a lot riding on this decision. And I mean, that, as you said, betrays a lot of the thinking at the time, which was that it was this really novel concept and, and it was new and untested, at least in the Australian market. Were there people who opposed it or groups that opposed it at the time? I presume so. Yeah, definitely. And in fact, some employer groups had made pretty detailed arguments against introducing a 40-hour work week. So they said that it would devastate some businesses, it would lead to lower productivity, there would be good shortages, price increases. And they leaned on this idea that some overseas trading partners were more competitive than Australia. Mm -hmm. And so reducing working hours would just see their overseas competitors 
dominate an increasingly globalised trade in a post-World War II era. So while that might have been somewhat accurate when you look at some parts of the world, as I mentioned earlier, earlier, some big economies like the US and the UK had already given workers a weekend. So it doesn't really hold water Mm. entirely. The unions have pointed out that some conservative politicians at the time were keen to avoid the 40-hour work week. But I got to say the tune has definitely changed over time. I was reminded of the time when Prime Minister Scott Morrison in 2019, who is from the more conservative side of politics, the Liberal Party, went against his more progressive opponent, Bill Shorten, for proposing a way to get more electric vehicles sold and used in Australia with this line. Bill Shorten wants to end the weekend when it comes to his policy on electric vehicles. And Scott Morrison went on to beat Bill Shorten at the election. Was it a line like this that helped him? Very possibly, (laughs) I would say, because the weekend is sacred in Australia. And I spoke with Sally McManus, who is the secretary of the Australian Council of Trade Unions, and she quite succinctly said, quote, you wouldn't want to get in between an ordinary person and their right to a weekend. You'd be hard-pressed to find anyone fighting against the right to a weekend in this day and age. No, I would agree with that. But when you were listing the reasons why um, people at the time or business groups at the time were rallying against this notion of a weekend, it did sound eerily familiar um, and like the same tune that people who are against the four-day work week now, you know, all of these ideas of a loss of productivity and, you know, what will happen, it will devastate businesses, those sorts of things. So, I mean, it's been 77 years since the six-day work week turned into five, and now we are, as I said before, kind of hurtling towards this idea of a four-day work week. Where are we at with that now? Well, I was hoping you'd bring that up, (laughs) Zara. Um, When I first looked at this uh, idea of a weekend first coming into existence, um, some people said to me, the court should have barracked for a three-day weekend instead of a two-day weekend. Um, But that's where we're at now. So the weekend was hard fought for and the conversations really increasingly focused on a four-day work week and whether it could improve productivity and worker morale. Because we know, especially post-COVID, that burnout rates are pretty high in most industries In fact, Australia has one of the highest rates of burnout in the world, with Microsoft's work index trend showing around 62% of workers feel burnt out, compared to a global average of 48%. Mm. So a few workplaces have now trialled a four-day work week, like Medibank, the private health insurer. And in 2022, there are about two dozen companies that trialled the four-day work week and recorded a 64% drop in burnout among staff and more than a third of workers also said they felt less stressed Mm. at work. And it's trickled into politics too. The ACT government is considering a four-day work week trial for the public sector employees and that was after a parliamentary committee had recommended it. I'm curious because in the 40s the push was really led by the unions. Are we seeing the unions behind this current push for a four-day working week in the way that that they were behind, you know, establishing the weekend back then? They definitely are considering it. In fact, when I spoke to Sally McManus, she said that they had been looking through some ideas of reducing the work week from 38 hours, which is mm. what it's at now, to 35. Mm. So that would take the number of hours worked down three hours, spread across four days, but incomes wouldn't be affected, salaries wouldn't be Mm. impacted by that kind of work week. So the unions are definitely looking at it. And Uh, I mean, they did have quite a bit to do with the right to disconnect legislation as well. So I guess there are just different ways that this is now being woven into the public conversation. Absolutely. But you also mentioned a really important point that I think is worth touching on, which is there was some resistance to the weekend initially Mm. from some of those employer groups. And there continues to be a little bit of pushback when it comes to looking at the four-day work Mm. week. There are some very genuine questions about how that would actually play out, what that would look like. And there are definitely some issues that some business groups are concerned about. Zara, you and I have also spoken at length about the nature of the workplace as boss to employee. 
And I think it's just important to note that we as journalists also work in one of those industries where it could be really tricky to Mm. bring in a four-day work week just by the sheer nature of the news cycle. It's a 24-7 grind. I wish we could just switch it off one day of the week. Just no (laughs) No news news. today. (laughs) No No bragging news. No no one do anything interesting. But that would also require people to just not die on certain days because that's newsworthy. And, you know, some significant people and... uh, Uh, significant events can occur at any time of the day. We just would never be able to predict it. And so the four-day work week's just definitely something we're going to keep hearing about. And in the meantime, Zara, happy weekend anniversary to you. Happy weekend anniversary. And thanks for jumping on the pod again today, Harry. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Daily Oz. If you learned something and want to take it to trivia on Tuesday, let us know. We love hearing about all the fun facts that you pick up through the week. If you're listening on Spotify, you can leave a comment there. Otherwise, if you are watching on YouTube, can leave a comment on there. We will be back again tomorrow, but until then, have a great day.